Hello, ZooMed fans. We're here at AnimalCon 2023, and we're here with Carrie. Carrie, do you want to tell uh, the ZooMed fans a little bit about yourself? Sure. My name's Carrie Molinero. Um, I'm from El Paso, Texas, and I have the Molinero Snake Lab that's on TikTok and YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> what do you What do you do? <laughs> my, I guess my primary content is bringing people through the journey of eggs hatching. So I'll, I'll once one of my snakes lays eggs, I'll take them through. Okay, this is what happens after that she lays eggs. This is what happens. You know, this is what the eggs look like on day two of incubation, day fifteen of incubation, all the way up to them hatching and having their first shed and just that whole life cycle. And I'll, I'll pretty much even like pr coming up soon, um, the breeding season will start. So I'll start pairing the snakes. So I, I kind of make it educational and show people that whole process on how it how it all works. What species of snakes are you working with on this? So I'm I'm doing I do. I I always do ball pythons every year. I'll do children's pythons. I did a clutch of uh, a couple of clutches of tricolor hognose. I've done Bradley pythons, um, and I keep uh, uh, corn snakes. I'll be doing corn snakes this year as well. And then I have reticulated pythons that she'll she'll pop in. I have a reticulated python named Jinx, and she'll pop into uh, to videos every now and then. And I and I just got a pair of Mexican black king snakes that I'm gonna grow up, and then I'll I'll breed them in the future nice. as well. So a little so, bit of everything. So what came first, like the chicken or the egg question? Reptile keeping or social media? Which was your which uh, was first? Definitely rep, reptile keeping. I've I've had it for um, I, I kept them when I was young different types of reptiles. Um, I ended up joining the Marine Corps in 2007, so I had to kind of get rid of every, all of my snakes for nine years. And then after I got out, I had some, you know, I had a house of my own and I was like, I kind of settled down. So I was like, you know what? I want to get snakes again. again. So, it, so, it, so I got back into uh, to keeping. And um, when, I, when I got back into it, I noticed all these different color and pattern combinations of the of ball pythons. I was like, what is going on? Like when I used to keep sure. you, you might find an albino and that right. was rare. And that was an exciting um, but thing. But now they're like, yeah, yeah. exactly. And now they're, <laughs> and now they were everywhere. So, um, uh, so that kind of sparked that like, oh, that's, and that's where I got the name Molinero Snake Lab. I felt like a mad scientist. I was like, well, what happens if I mix this one with this oh, one and yeah. see what happens? And then it just, it spread from there. You know, I, I, I got interested in all these other species and, and, and just keeping other what, stuff. What so. led you to go to social media? What led you to um, where you're at now? Basically, I, I started it kind of just document some of my, uh, uh, the projects I was working on, kind of show people snakes. You know, it, it was, it was interesting. Like I had a lot of. Um, locally people were interested in it. So I was like, I'm going to make a channel, share, you know, the, sure. the, what I was working on, the different types of morphs or whatever I was breeding. And then it morphed into so much of that. Once I got on TikTok in, in 2020 during COVID, I had a friend that kept pushing me to post stuff on, on TikTok. So I started to, and, it, and TikTok is where it really took off for me. That's when it turned into more of, I, 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 I switched more from just trying to find an audience to sell snakes to, to educating. And that's, that's where, the, that's the love that I found in, in creating right. content was, was educating people on snakes and um, it's showing the process that I, I, I love the whole breeding and egg hatching process. We were talking earlier and you'd mentioned outreach. You, you like to go out and do outreach uh, education as well. You know, you want to talk a little bit about that? So that's one of one of the things I love to get out into the community and, and get people to hold snakes. You're, there's always so much uh, negativity surrounding snakes and oh, there's only good snake is a dead snake, all those type of, of comments you hear you pe people say all the time. So I, I like to get out there. I do a lot of, um, I'll do my kids career days at school at some elementary schools and middle schools I'll do uh, some local markets that I'll, I'll just get out to and and, and um, to, to teach uh, just to teach and get people to hold hands take pictures of, uh, or hold the snakes take pictures I feel kind of helps reduce that negative st stigma that's Absolutely. often associated Absolutely. with snakes. Well, here you're taking it one step further. You actually wrote a book recently, right? I did. I did. I wrote, um, uh, it's called What's in Dr. Serpentine's Lab? And it's a, it's a, it's basically, uh, a, it's basically, <laughs> yeah, it's name. a little bit Dr. Frankenstein, yeah. mad scientist yeah. kind of feel to it. And um, yeah, it's, it's targeted to elementary age kids and it just goes through, it, it's, you know, it's about this Dr. Serpentine and he mm -hmm. takes you through all his collection of snakes, the different types of snakes he has and the chores that he has to do to to take care of the snakes to kind of help introduce y y younger kids to to snakes and snake keeping and kind of give them uh, something other than books about keeping you know pet dogs and pet cats something for those there's not there's know, not a whole the, lot out there so right. that's wonderful what advice would you have to 
you, you know, you obviously deal with a lot of education, a lot of younger, you know, the outreach and the book. What advice do you have to young keepers that are considering their first their first pet snake? I would say research. You always want to you always want to do your do your research. Um, I get a lot of young keepers that'll reach out to me and say, "Hey, this is my first snake ever. I'm interested in in getting a snake from you. It'll be my first one." And I will sit there and I will talk to them as long as I have to about, hey, this is a good enclosure to get, get this set up, use this substrate. So I, I try to educate them as much as possible so when they get the animal, they know what they're getting into, they have a proper setup and everything is ready. Gary, thank you very much for uh, being here with us today and enjoy the rest of Animal Con. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.